Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to see how to create our own shockwave effect. You can obviously find some already made on the internet, but sometimes you need to make your own for a particular effect. So we are going to see how to do that today. You can obviously find all the source files on my Patreon, as well as this shockwave made here in really HD quality. Let's go for the tutorial guys. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is to create a mesh that will allow us to draw particles. I will therefore create a simple torus in the center, like that, and reduce it a bit in top view. I will now create my type setup, open editor, and I will create a burst 0 and 0. I now add a position object to emit the particle from my object. I pick the torus. And we can see here the particle created. I change the display to sprite to see them better. And I will create now a speed operator. For the direction, I will choose Object Center Out and select the torus. We can now see that the particles are all moving away from the center of my torus. Perfect. We can obviously play with the divergence with the noise by increasing the strength and also the scale, which will allow us to create a slightly more random result. I'm just going to emit my particle from frame 5 to 8, and it's not bad like that. I go back to my speed and I increase the speed variation to really give something more different. Okay, not bad. I will increase the magnitude because I want faster movement, so maybe value of 2. Great. What I want now is to make this particle disappear. I will therefore create a time test operator. Frame 15. I now create a delete and I will link this time test to my delete so that after 15 frames the particle disappears. Okay, it's good like that. I can just increase the variation a little. Look what it gives. I can obviously go back to my burst to adjust the number of particles. Try with a different seed, maybe in a position object, until I have the movement I want for my chuck wave. What I can also do is to add a spawn operator to create other particles. And I will go down to inherited properties to add some variation. I can increase the number of particles emitted by increasing the offspring. Add a little variation here, and the same in the property before. Okay, it's cool. There are just too much particles, I think. Two is enough. And we have a really nice effect for our shockwave. Okay, that's it for that purpose. Okay, so here we have our particle simulation, and we'll now move on to Phoenix. I will therefore put myself at the beginning of the animation and create a phoenix fire. I adjust the height of my grid to properly wrap the particles. Ok, that's good. I pass the adaptive grid to smoke. And we can if you want activate the maximum expansion that we can set if we already know the maximum size that we don't want to exceed. I now go into dynamics and I don't change anything here. I uncheck massive vorticity because I prefer to use a classic mode. I'm going to set a value of 0.1 so as not to have too much thickness. I can add some random values here. And of course, I'm thinking of increasing the quality to 50 to have a good conservation. Step with a value of 2. And I can now go to output where I will think about activating velocity because we will need this information for type flow. I will now activate the GPU preview. And that's it for the Phoenix Fire. I will now create a Phoenix source and pick my type flow one. Slightly increase the outgoing velocity. I don't need temperature and add a little noise to my velocity. I think it's good for the configuration. I can now launch my Phoenix simulation. Okay, 
it looked pretty good as a first result. I'm just going to add a little turbulence with the Phoenix turbulence. I increase the size a little and I will lower the strength. I can now relaunch again my simulation. And we can see that the turbulence has really added something. Maybe too much, but I think it's good. We can also increase the resolution of our simulation, but it's not necessary because we are not going to render this mock. That's more than enough like this. Okay, so we have our simulation. It's very good like that. I will now return to Typeflow, create a new Typeflow and add a browse operator. Five for the start and the end, maybe 200 particles to start. And I will create a position object. What I'm going to do now is reactivate my torus to duplicate it. And I will increase its size because I don't want any problem in the departure of my particle. Like that, it's look good to me. I select the torus. We can see here the particles created on my torus. And I will now add a fluid force operator. I will now select my Phoenix Fire, which I use for the smoke simulation. We can see that everything works perfectly. The particles are driven by the force of my smoke. I change the display to Sprite. We can see that uh, the start is not perfect. So I'm going to go to Typeflow and change my time step to 1-4. We can see that our simulation has changed and we have something more interesting here. Perfect. I can also add a slow with a small value to slow down my particles over time. And I will now increase my particle count. Maybe 5 million. We can easily go very high because we have no shape to create. You can really see the difference here with a lot of particles. I'm going to go further in my animation to see what it gives. Yeah, great. We can see that you have a very cool animation here. If I do a preview, we can already see what it looked like in the movement. The turbulence is certainly a little high for this example, but it's a very satisfactory result for the first test. Okay, once we are happy with our movement, we will export this particle in PRT file. I will therefore create an export operator. Type to PRT. Frame 0 to 40. And I will save my particle in the folder I want. Once it's good, all that remains is to generate our particles. I obviously accelerating, but uh, it really doesn't take long. Okay, perfect. I previously created a camera to position myself well in the scene and a very plane to eliminate my particles. And I will now go into Phoenix and I will create a Phoenix form in the center of my viewport. Here. I now go to Helper, Phoenix FD, and I will do the same with the PRT reader. The PRT will be used to load our PRT file and the Phoenix form, or particle shader, we will see it, will allow us to create the rendering. I will now load the PRT sequence that I rendered previously, open, and we can see that we already have our shockwave effect loaded. If we advance in the animation, we see that everything seems perfect. I will now go to my particle shader and select the PRT reader. You can see it here. And we will now see that we can modify the parameter of this effect. I'm going to run a render first to see what we already have. We can see that it calculates quickly. So, we have here an interesting beginning of the effect, but our rendering is, I think, too much white. I will start by decreasing the alpha point, maybe 0.05 we see that we recover the texture. I can also divide by 2 the diffuse multiply, and there we can see that we have something very interesting. You can also activate the motion blur here, but I will do it later. You can see here that you can also change the color, maybe try with the blue, 
but suddenly we lose the multiplier diffuse effect. So I'm going to raise it to 2. But for my final compositing, I prefer to use a white color, so I will change the color to white and go back to my original values. Finally, if you want to add motion blur to connect your particles, we can do it here in this option. If you have exported velocity, you just have to select force motion blur. I will now increase my particle count with a count multiplier. I will go from 5 million to 10 million by increasing my value to 2. We can see that we have a lot more particles. If I move forward in the animation, we can see what it looks like. It's really cool. Once we are happy with our rendering, it's time to render the animation. So I go to the V-Ray option, and given that we are going to render point, we can increase the threshold to 0 0.2. This will be more than enough and it will allow us to render fairly quickly. Of course, type to bucket. And once all that is good, we just have to run our animation. Once it's done, we go to After Effects. You can see here the Elixir sequence of the shockwave I rendered. What is cool is that we can have quite different results by going into Interpret Footage, Main, and by changing the alpha mode. We can see here on ignore that I have a lot more particles. Really cool effect too. It's up to you to see the result you prefer. I also added the RSMB effect to add even more motion blur. I can of course increase the value even more if I really want to bind my particles. For the color, I added a color vibrance effect, which is a plugin that you can find on the Video Copilot website. This plugin works very well for this kind of effect. And finally, I did a bit of compositing with the curve glow to really make my rendering much more interesting and impactful. So here it's basically the method I used to create my own shockwave. You can of course find all this file on my Patreon. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. And you can follow me on Instagram, Beyonce, and support me on Patreon if you want. See you soon for next tutorial, guys. Bye.